Something is happening on the screen right now that I do in all of my YouTube videos, especially the talking head A-roll shots, but not all of them. Can you tell what it is? Here's a hint, it's not happening anymore. And now it is. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this dynamic and smooth slow zoom effect in Premiere Pro. I'll also tell you how I use this immersive zoom technique in my videos. Diving into Premiere Pro, you can see this A-roll video of me on the timeline. And to create this zoom effect, first make sure your playhead is at the very start of the clip and that your clip is highlighted. Then in effect controls, we're gonna create a keyframe for the scale parameter. If you're unfamiliar with keyframes, I have a beginner tutorial on my channel that I'm going to link at the end of this video. Now, after creating the initial starting keyframe, let's drag the playhead to the end of the clip and then increase the scale value to somewhere in between 105 to 110. This can change on a clip to clip basis, but in this example, I can go all the way to 110 and the zoom doesn't even reach my laptop which is great. In the end, it really depends on a couple of things like camera placement and if I have certain things on the desk. But my main rule of thumb is that I always have to be fully in frame. So the zoom effect will never reach the top of my head or my arms because that will look ridiculous. Now, if you're familiar with keyframes, you'll know that there are actually different type of keyframe variations like the ease in and out options. But for talking head A-roll videos, I actually leave the keyframes as linear and I'll even drag the second keyframe to the very, very last frame before the cut. Now, when we watch it back, you can see in real time how the keyframes create that slow zoom effect. I don't wanna chalk it up to retention boosting because I actually like how it looks in my videos, but the non-stop linear zoom does give the video an immersive, faster paced feel. And the cut, like the one that just happened, gives that pattern interrupt that keeps the viewer watching. But at the same time, I script all of my videos word for word, so those cuts were gonna be there anyway. Now you may have been noticing when two talking head videos are back to back, I don't apply the zoom effect to the second clip. And this is because it can be disruptive to constantly watch A-roll videos that are zooming in. Again, my rule of thumb is that I will only apply the dynamic zoom to the very first talking head A-roll clip and any other talking head A-roll clips that directly follow a B-roll clip. I'll also apply this effect to certain B-roll footage, stock or otherwise, that I feel could benefit from the added zoom. But of course, that's up to your discretion. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, guys. To learn the ins and outs of keyframes and what's possible with them, consider watching the six-minute tutorial on your screen now, and I'll see you there.